NZXT H7 Elite proof, if we need it, that no, you cannot flow air through glass. It's just impossible. It's getting on for three years since NZXT launched this, the H710i. I didn't review this case but I did use it in a build uh, about a year ago now and I gave some comments on it. So there's half a review on this channel, we'll link it below. What I did do was to review the H510 Elite three years ago and my views on both the 510 and the 710 were very similar, which is that those cases were built essentially for show rather than go. Uh, They're all about the aesthetic and ventilation and small details like installing hard drives seem to be a second thought. Well, now we have the H7 Elite. In fact, there are three cases. I'll show you the other two in a moment. There's the H7 base model, an H7 Flow, and this H7 Elite. Just from that distance, looking at these two cases, they look very similar. Clearly the front panels have changed, that's obvious. However, they're both solid. And as we know, solid, whether it's metal or glass, doesn't flow air so well. There are breathing holes on the sides of the H710. Here we have some mesh. There are subtle differences like that that would appear to be moving in the correct direction. The big change by eye is that the H710 had a solid top panel and this H7 has a very perforated top panel. To remove the glass on the side of the 710, slacken a thumb screw away. The back panel, pop button. And then we come to the front panel, which is real fun. So there's a great big handhold underneath. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve great big plastic pegs which engage with corresponding holes to remove the top panel. I mean, have you ever seen anything like it? Once we're inside the case, we see one fan at the rear, three fans at the front, filter, there's this modesty panel to cover the cables. And around the rear, cable management channels. Loads of this perforated mesh, which is both aesthetic and attempts to flow some air. Uh, I found the thermals for this case were not bad, whereas the H510 struggled with thermal performance. And then we come to this H7 Elite. Simply pull off the glass, no thumb screws, no nothing. Same deal that side. We have some pins that engage in these cutouts. So you engage the panel and then rock it up into place. Let's remove the top panel. Again, tool free, but much more straightforward. Instead of having 12 enormous great big pegs, we've got six little balls which engage there. And then the front glass. Again, the same system, so six small uh, engagement mechanisms rather than 12 enormous. Makes perfect sense. In the top, the filter, no filter in the front because it's glass and that isn't intended to flow air, so that's a bit of a puzzle. How's that gonna work? And then when you look at the core chassis, you'll see we have a perforated power supply shroud, just as with the 710. And around the back, cable management system. This H7 Elite, essentially it's been fixed. Uh, it still looks pretty enough, but common sense features like panels that you can remove and engage without breaking your fingers or cutting yourself, I mean, they should have been there from the start. So that's a terribly brief look at the Elite. Let's get up the base model and the flow. The Elite is priced at £180, the basic or core case and the flow versions 
are both priced at £120 here in the UK. That is in this day and age reasonable pricing. The H510 and the H710 are both criticised for being slightly expensive. The fact is the pricing from NZXT has increased uh, very slightly by uh, a few pounds from uh, those prices from three years ago, but the world has moved on more than that. So we originally criticised NZXT for their pricing and now their pricing on the face of it has improved, provided of course the cases are a reasonable quality. Colours. The Elite comes in either black or white, matte black, matte white. The core basic version and the flow version, black, white or black and white. And if you buy a white case it has clear glass, if you buy a black case it has quite heavily tinted glass. We've taken a look at the Elite already, let us take a look at this basic core version which actually got damaged in transit and that might come as a surprise to you because if you look you won't see any evidence of it. However, the fan mysteriously has been destroyed, quite peculiar. So the fundamental difference between the two versions here, the 120 pound versions and the 180 pound version fans, you get one 120 mil fan at the front, one 120 at the rear. And as you can see from the design, they look like airflow fans. And the cables just hang in the breeze, ready to connect to your motherboard. You may, when I looked around the Elite, have observed that this version comes with an RGB and fan hub control unit. It's a slightly peculiar unit, it supports three fans but six RGB channels. Uh, NZXT, as with so many manufacturers, has their own proprietary connector. So this is clearly a hub that will uh, allow you to connect in, for example, one of their AIO coolers. Uh, and then you can control the whole bang shoot over USB using their CAM software. And the flow. Are the same case. I can take the flow panel, put the fan back together temporarily, and there we go. This case is now a flow case. Fan support. You can install three 120s or three 140s at the front, in the roof, three 120s or two 140s, and in the rear a single 120 or 140. Radiator support at the front, a 280 or a 360. In the roof, a 280 or a 360. And if you really want, a 120 or 140 at the rear. One or two neat touches about the case. We do have a top filter. We also have a filter inside the flow front panel. And the smallest filter you've ever seen in the front for that intake area there. And a filter for the power supply there. My guess is that NZXT, having been criticized for their H510, H710 cases, has looked around the market. They probably looked at Corsair's 4,000 and 5,000 series cases and thought, hmm, so you take a core chassis and you change a few things around, including the option of a mesh or airflow front panel. You keep things simple. Uh, you can sell a all singing all dancing model that has RGB fans, if you like, for more money. Uh, that could work. It's worked for them. Why wouldn't it work for us? And to my mind, that's exactly what we have going on here. Other details that have changed that I'm less keen about. The power supply cannot go in from the rear. That's now fixed. You have to install it through there. However, that is a nice sizable opening, so that shouldn't be a problem. While these cases look very similar to the H510, H710, they have clearly made a great many detailed changes. The hardware going into this PC consists of a C1000 Gold power supply from NZXT and this NZXT N7Z590 motherboard. Yes, I would like to have used a new Z690 motherboard, but as yet, NZXT has not launched those. Matching components to go with these parts, we have a Sabrent Rocket 4.0 SSD, some Corsair Vengeance DDR4 LPX memory, and a Core i9-11900K. Graphics and cooling, I'll come to those shortly. 
We've pretty much stripped down the chassis. There are one or two other things to point out. Storage. Two SSD sleds retained with screws rather than thumb screws. I wonder, could we, once we have the screw removed, yeah, I'd be confident leaving a SATA SSD installed without using the backup screw. And in the floor of the case, we have a drive cage. With the previous cases from NZXT, I criticized them because, again, you have a cage without sleds, but the cage was fixed. So installing drives, you had to basically put them in and then put a screwdriver through the front or the rear of the chassis, which was less than ideal. Clearly installing drives here, quite straightforward. You can mount a drive on top of the cage as well, should you wish. So it's a relatively flimsy piece of steel work, but it'll do the job absolutely fine, I think. And of course, if you choose to remove that, you're opening up a bunch of space in the floor of the case. The accessory pack separates the fasteners by type. And we get two SSD sleds that snap onto the power supply shroud. You can choose the exact location, but there are cable management holes there for the power and SATA connections. So that's probably cost them a matter of pence and takes advantage of that ventilator power supply shroud. Use it for more storage if you must, or leave it free to breathe. Quite musical. Around the front of the case, and we can remove the front fan or radiator rack to ease the build. Again, no thumb screws, but the screws themselves are captive. And that's a nice little touch. With the motherboard assembly prepared, we slip it into place and it absolutely looks the part inside the NZXT case. Next up, we have the power supply, which goes in nice and easy. Moving to the CPU cooler, we have a Noctua NHD15 Chromax Black. Very much a black theme for this build. There's plenty of space inside the H7 flow for this very large air cooler. And finally, we have a Sapphire RX 6800 XT graphics card. Again, plenty of space. Indeed, if you use smaller components, this case would look practically empty. Noise and thermal testing has been a prolonged experience because we have so many permutations. We have the basic case, we have the flow version, we have the Elite. Yes, I've transplanted the components into this case and I've also swapped out the Elite's front panel for the flow front panel. Remember, same core chassis so you can mix and match your parts. So that's four cases and then of course you've got different fan speeds. If you are eagle-eyed you will note the rear fan is not rotating, that's because I've just unplugged it because it's right here and it's frankly rather drafty and noisy. So that's purely for my convenience while you enjoy the RGB light show at the front. We'll come to the RGB in a short while. Noise levels. First we have the basic chassis with the solid front panel, the two case fans and the two Noctua fans running at 1100 RPM. Then I swapped out the front panel for the flow front panel, still running the fans at 1100 RPM. Then we have the Elite case with the glass front panel, all the fans running at 1100 RPM. But remember, we now have four case fans and the two fans on the Noctua cooler. And now the Elite with the flow front panel, all six fans running at 1100 RPM. Returning to the core chassis with the solid front panel, fans now running at full speed. 
So that's the case fans at 1200 RPM, the Noctuas at 1500 RPM. Swapping out the front panel for the flow, fan still running at full speed. The Elite with all six fans running at 1500 RPM. And the Elite case with a flow front panel, all the fans still at 1500 RPM. The Elite with all the fans running at full speed. This is case fans at 1800 RPM and the Noctuas at 1500 RPM. And the final run, the Elite case with the flow front panel, all the fans running at full speed. Thermals, as you saw in those various clips, I was running a combination of Cinebench R23 and Times by Stress Test. Total power draw at the wall socket, 595 to 605 watts. The CPU drawing 190 to 195 watts. The GPU 255 watts. It's a Core i9-11900K, which is drawing 190 watts, running at 4.8 or so gigahertz all cores. The RX 6800 XT is running at 2.2 gigahertz. I've separated the charts for the CPU and the GPU because it was just horribly unwieldy and it was all smashed together. Let us start with the CPU. On the basic case with the solid front panel, fans at 1100 RPM, CPU temperature 79. Increasing the fan speed drops the CPU temperature to 78. Changing to the flow front panel with the fans at 1100 RPM, 75 degrees. Increasing the fan speed with the flow front panel, 71 degrees. Nice progression. Switching over to the Elite chassis, despite the fact we have many more fans working away, the solid glass front panel increased temperature slightly from the last reading to 72. With the Elite increasing fan speed, dropped the temperature very slightly to 71. Somewhat bizarrely, running the fans at full speed in the Elite actually increased temperatures very slightly. We've got a lot of motion going on inside the case. It seems to me this case is just choking because it has so little airflow at the front. The Elite with the flow front panel and the fans slowed to 1100 RPM, the CPU temperature is 71. Increasing the fan speed with the flow front panel, the temperature dropped quite significantly to 68. And with the fans howling away at full speed and the flow front panel, the temperature was 67. Graphics temperature. With the basic case and the solid front panel, the temperature was 81. Increasing fan speed hurt temperature. It went up to 82. Switching to the flow front panel, the temperature drops to 78. Increasing fan speed makes no difference for the flow panel, still 78. The Elite case with all those fans, we see a temperature decrease to 76. Increasing fan speed in the Elite, the temperature actually increased to 77. And ramping the fans up all the way in the Elite, still 77. The Elite case with the flow front panel, fans slowed down, temperature 76. Increasing fan speed in the Elite with the Flow, 76. And running the fans at max speed in the Elite with the Flow front panel, temperature 75. The frustrating thing about those thermal results and indeed the noise results is that it's common sense. You can't flow air through glass, we know this. And a mesh front panel flows air better than a solid front panel, we know that. Even if you put an air filter behind the mesh, it's still better than solid. The thing is, and this is what really gets me, is that NZXT sent over some test data with their reviewer's guide that demonstrates that they know full well that this Elite case performs the same as the basic case of the solid front panel and that the flow case performs better. They were using different hardware to me. They were using much more intense hardware. They were using, and I can't quote the figures, which is galling, because they were using an undisclosed motherboard that's still under NDA, along with a Core i9 12900K and an RTX 3090. They pummeled their hardware with more power than I was using, 650 watts from memory. And they know full well that this does not work. And yet, this is what they're trying to sell us. I don't understand it. 
So my pros and cons. Pros. The H7 has good support for radiators, fans and storage. The price is fair, certainly for the two base models. Uh, the, the Flow 120, to my mind, of the three is the one to go for. The Basic for 120, I don't know why you'd go for it rather than the Flow. Whether you'd step up and pay the money for the Elite, well, I'm going to say don't do that. Cable management works well. It's not brilliant, but it's been thought about and the fundamentals are absolutely spot on. So well done NZXT. And the front IO panel, which I haven't mentioned at all in this review, is perfectly decent. It's on the core chassis on the top and it supports USB type C. Uh, I don't think it's changed at all from the H710, not by eye at any rate. It's fine. Cons. Airflow in the Elite is bizarre. You've got uh, some mesh down this side here. You've got that tiny little filtered intake at the bottom. The front is solid. This is solid. And to add to my frustration, the three fans behind the glass are PWM, as if the fan control makes the blindest bit of difference if they can't get air in the first place. By contrast, the cheaper case with the one fan at the front and the one fan at the rear, uh, those are voltage controlled fans. They're relatively slow, which is not the end of the world, but why not PWM? I mean, how much can it cost? The black cases have very heavily tinted glass. So heavily tinted that they're just mirrors. To my mind, you might just as well make the panel solid and forget about glass altogether. This, on the other hand, the clear glass, I quite like. And finally, this Elite case requires the use of NZXT's CAM software to control the RGB and the fans. That's a smart device version 3 around the back. Uh, it only works with their software. And I'd much prefer it if we at least had the option of hardware control on the case itself. The RGB itself, I will say, is fine. But the cam software, for choice, I'd give it a miss. Overall, I'm going to say the flow case is worth considering. This and the base models, no, just walk away.